Thank you, Jesus. If you know this one, we've been working on it the past few weeks. Sing it with us. How many of you know he's in this house this morning? Amen. the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. My God, he holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Won't be quiet. Shout out Shout out. 
there's a space in every beating heart. There's a longing that reaches past the stars. There's an answer to every question mark. There's a name. There's a hope flowing through these veins. There's a voice that goes to the pain. There's an ember ready for the flame. There's a name. We will feel.
gathered here in this house, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, to lift you up, Lord Jesus. For you are the way, the truth, and the life. In you, Lord, there's hope. Amen. For each and every one of us today, there's hope. Yes. Because of Jesus. Ah, hallelujah. He's at the right hand yes. of our Heavenly Father, and He's interceding for you. Yes. Come on, for all of us today, Amen. that we win, yes. that we overcome. Glory. See, His blood has not lost any power. That's right. The blood of Jesus can cleanse us and make us whole from all unrighteousness, yeah. of all of our mistakes, yeah. of all of our shortcomings, yeah. of all the sin, the yeah. blood of Jesus is able. See, God is still able today. Yes. Come on. In 2021, God is still able. That's Jesus right. is still able. Yeah. See, that's why we're here this morning. Come on, to allow God to be God to move in our lives, to lift us up, to give us heaven on earth. Amen. See, you and I can have heaven on earth. Right. The presence of God, the goodness of God that leads us to change. How many know that we need to change? God changes not. That's right. God doesn't need to change. You and I need to change. Yes. And he wants to change us from glory to glory. And as we present ourselves to him, we're able to do that Amen. because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. Come on, he is. Yeah. He is the Christ. Yeah. He is the Messiah. Yeah. He is the only hope for this world. Yeah. Do you understand that? Jesus yeah. is the only hope for the world today. Yeah. I mean, when you want world peace, you, you, you're talking about Jesus. That's right. See, he, he will bring it all together. There's coming a day when he will rule on the earth yes. Yes. for a thousand years. Yes. And everything will flow through him. But you know what? He's still flowing through the church today. Right. Amen. Amen. We don't have to wait that he can flow through us today. Right. It's a matter of us learning to surrender to his lordship. To allow Christ to be Christ in us. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about some changes. Amen. God is able to change us, to give us new life. Come on, to give us new direction. Some of us need new direction. Come on, some of us need to hear a word of the Lord for a change, a good change. The times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. Times of refreshing. How many know what it means to be refreshed? To be strengthened, to be encouraged. To know that, you know what, we're going to make it. We're not going under, we're going over. Hallelujah. See, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. See, he hasn't left us. He cannot deny himself. He is always present to heal. Yes. He is always present to pour out. Yes. To baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Woo, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To empower you to have victory. Mm. How many know that winning is better than losing? Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're glad that you're here this morning. We're so grateful that, that God is at work in you to do of his good pleasure. Did you know the Bible says that? He's at work in you to do of his good pleasure. Right. Come on, church. Right. Think about that. God is at work in you to do of his good pleasure. Right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, God knows what he's doing. Right. God's not thinking, huh, oh, this one's a tough one. Come on, this is a tough, you know, nut to crack. See, God is able. See, God is able to do far beyond what you could even ask or imagine. 
See, we, we've saw that He is love. God is love. Jesus. I mean, and Jesus never fails. Amen. That's right. Tell somebody before you sit down, tell somebody Jesus never fails. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm hungry of your Just we we want to welcome everyone today. We're glad that you're with us today. You know, we've, we've got a uh, baptism service today, but I'm also going to teach on baptism. So uh, it's, it's going to be a good morning. Then we're going to have a fellowship afterwards. We have some games for the kids. So it's going to be a, a great time in Jesus. Amen. You know, anytime the saints can get together and fellowship and eat, come on. That's right. It's good. Man, that was like went over like a lead balloon. It's like, oh, hallelujah. Well, you watch and see when, when we're eating, they're just, it's, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be after it. You know, if, if there's anyone here today that this is your first time being here at New Life, we, we want you to raise your hand. We want to welcome you in a, in a right way. So if this is your first time being with us right here, let's give them a warm welcome. I have the announcements. I got Michael coming up to do the announcement. But you know what? The kids are going to be heading back to school. Teachers are going to be heading back to school. Uh, administrators, those that are coaches and those that are a part of the school system. And how many know that our schools, that we need to pray over our schools? Amen. Oh, come on, church. The church needs to pray. There's power in your prayers, so we need to be praying. Amen. So, so if if you're going back to school, I want you to stand up. If, if you're an administrator or a teacher, I want you to stand up right, right where you're at. If that's you today, you're going back to school. We got, we got two. All right, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, well, stand up because we're going to pray over you. We're going to cover you with our prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Just stretch your hands out towards somebody that's there. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God who sees and a God who knows, that you are a God that pours out wisdom. Father, that, that the angels encamp around them to protect them, to keep them safe from all harm. And Father, we, we, we thank you, Lord, for just causing favor, favor to be poured out upon them. Lord, we, we, we thank you, Lord, that, that their, their life and their testimony of, of serving you would be seen and heard without even saying a word, just by their actions, just by how they they, they present themselves. Lord, we, we, we thank you for just causing great grace to be upon them in this time of this new year. And Father, we thank you for all the school districts, Lord, all, all the schools that are going back. Father, we're, we're just asking, Lord, right now, protection, protection, Father, favor, Father, that your word would, would infiltrate every school, Father, every school would, would know, would have people placed strategically in, in places that, that your name would be heard and seen and, and their life, that lifestyle would be seen and heard by all. Father, we thank you for just causing great grace, great grace to be upon them in this new year. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. I got you. For all those that are morning people, good morning. Good morning. For all those who are not, eh. <laughs> well, this Friday we're gonna have feed the need. It's gonna be host. The 50s Life Group are gonna be the ones overseeing it. If you guys have ever been a part of feed the need, it's a great outreach to the community. It really reaches to people that are in need. So if you ever get a chance, please volunteer for that. Yeah. Next Sunday we're gonna be having communion. Um, everyone's. Welcome to receive it. And then we have, it's a girl baby shower for Shane and Ash, Ashley Bollinger on Saturday, September 11th from one to three. It's open house style. Yes. They're registered at Target and Amazon. And then Floyd and uh, Martha Harbert will need help with volunteering for uh, Helping Hands Homeless Shelter. Um, it's, on, it's in Springfield, it's on Washington Street on, on the third Saturday of each month. It starts at 5.30, it 
So if anybody could be willing to help, Martha, you want to raise your hand real quick so they know what you look like. There we go. <laughs> um, please, please do that. Um, I'm going to leave you guys with on that. Um, it's Proverbs 3, 27 and 28. If you get a chance, look it up because it, it talks about that. It's great to be involved in stuff. Don't just sit by and just watch people do things. Um, <clears throat> next, we're going to have, it's going to be Power Light Fest next Sunday, August 22nd. And it's Danny Goki and Micah Powell uh, leading. And then we have in Verdon, this is Ignite Ministries. They are doing a back to school uh, concert for everybody. It's on Monday. August 23rd from 5.30 to 8 p.m. And then we have another concert in Waverly. It's an old-fashioned picnic on Sunday the 28th. Music starts at 6 on the stage. Um, it's performed by All Together United. And then lastly, next this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we always have a uh, dinner that we make, my wife, puts a lot of hard work into it. <laughs> yes. I just get a taste test it, so you know, it's always good. <laughs> but it's, it's on Wednesday nights, it's before service, it's $5. We make it as simple as possible so that way you guys can enjoy a great meal. We're gonna be having homemade chicken Alfredo along with garlic bread and a cookie. When I mean homemade, like we really put the work in to make it homemade. We, Right all the does. cheese. Well, Brittany does. Well, I help her, but yes, I give her all the glory because if it goes good, she gets all of it, right? But then we also have the on the entree by itself for three dollars. And then if you guys haven't noticed, we are having our picnic, and Pastor will be letting us all know on further instructions how the baptism and picnic will be going. All right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we, uh, what we're going to do is we have uh, a message that I'm going to give to you. And then after that, then we'll have the baptism service. And then we'll, uh, we'll instruct you how to uh, go through the line. And, uh, of course, you have tables right here to, to bring it out and eat at. So, uh, I'm here. You're glad you're here this morning. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, what a day it is to be alive in Jesus. That's right. Come on, think, That's think right. about it. God chose you to be in this generation yes. for such a time as now. Uh -huh. Of all that's going on, that God has us living in this time frame. That's and right. it's, a, it's a good thing. Amen. You know, we can win out. That's right. Amen, amen. But well, did you come to, to, to bring your offering today? Yes. Come on. Yeah. Are you happy to give your offering? Yes. You know, God loves a yes. cheerful giver. Yes. Amen. So let's do it cheerfully. Brother, happy birthday. I saw you had a birthday the other day. You're what, 23? Yeah, close to it. Maybe a few more years added to it, but amen. So if you need an envelope for your giving, raise your hand and Usher will get you that envelope. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Paul, how are you doing? You doing all right? Good, good. Praise the Lord. I don't know, we're, you know, whatever we may be dealing with in our bodies, that you know what the the Lord is able to to heal it. Amen. Amen. He is our healer. He's our savior. He's our redeemer. He's our all in all. Yes. I mean, Jesus can do it all. That's right. Amen. There's nothing that he can't do. Hallelujah. All right, so we all have an envelope. Let's pray over this offering. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for receiving, Lord, this offering into your kingdom. Father, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, that you would be acknowledged and, Lord, that you would be raised up, Lord Jesus, as you said, that if you would be lifted up, you would draw all men to yourself. So, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we desire to lift you up in this as we give in this offering. Lord, we, we thank you that you said that you would multiply the seeds that, have, that are sown. So we thank you, Lord, for multiplying the seed right now that as it, as it goes forth 
into this offering, Father, that you would multiply it to the givers. Father, we thank you for establishing your covenant here on the earth. We thank you for it, Father. We believe it to be so. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Amen. Amen. All right. Look at Jesus. Baptisms. We're going to talk to you today about baptisms. Being baptized into Jesus. How about being baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes. And then it talks about being baptized in water. Yes. So, you know, sometimes when you hear the word baptism, we, we immediately just think of water baptism. That's one of them. I want to show you in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, and verse 1 and 2, of what it says. It, it says this. It says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. Now, we all know what elementary means, right, dear Watson? Uh -huh. It's the basic things. The, the, the things that you teach right off the bat. You know, these are things that we need to know about. And he says, then he says, let us go on to perfection or maturity. Now, how many here you want to be a mature Christian? Amen. Amen. That we want we, we don't want to stay babies. How many know there are babies in the body of Christ? Yes. And they need to be taken care of. Amen? Right. We, we shouldn't get upset when a baby cries. That's right. Isn't that right? That's right? In the natural, you know, they're wanting something. They're needing something. So we have to figure it out, don't we? Uh -huh. Come on, church, that we need to figure out those that are mature. It says be gentle with those. How many know you need to be gentle with the baby? Yes. Uh, come on That's right. it's like it's no no don't do that okay be gentle you know the bible says something about being gentle you know see the body of christ that we, we we need to be gentle jesus knows how to be gentle amen that's right but he he goes on to say he says let us go on to maturity or perfection not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptisms. Now, that's what we're going to talk today, so I wanted you to see that. Now, if you look at that word baptisms, there's an S on the end, and that means plural, and plural means more than one. So there are more than one baptisms so the body of Christ needs to see that and understand that. He says of, of the laying on of hands. How many know there's there, there's churches that don't even teach the laying on of hands? That's right. Well, I didn't know it was in there. Well, that's why you need to look. <laughs> look, look into this law of liberty. That's what James says. You know, the, a person who does that is going to be blessed. Because if you seek, you're going to what? If you ask, if you knock, see, Jesus knows what he's talking about, but it's us seeking after the things of God. And, and this is an elementary teaching, the laying on of hands. And there's so many churches that will not even go near it. It's almost taboo. We don't do that in our church. Well, then you're not doing what the Bible says to do. Amen. Don't shout me down now. Okay. He says, of the resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. So these are elementary teachings, and I, I want us to center up on the baptisms. Okay? Now, if, if you can see here, I've, I've got some uh, an object lesson here. I've got to put this up here. Oh. I think this is going to help some of you. That's my my prayer is this is going to shed some light on some things for you. Okay? In baptisms, the three baptisms that I'm going to talk to you today is about being baptized into Jesus. Okay? That's one. You know, the second one is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, the baptism into Jesus is really into that eternal life. Having that new life. 
a new spirit to be born again. Okay, that's, that's what it means to be baptized into Jesus. But there's also a baptism into the Holy Spirit, which is in power. Right. Come on, the supernatural. That's right. And there's people that don't want any part of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, but yet the Bible teaches it. Mm -hmm. See, you got to look into it to find out what's in it. Right. How many know that the Word of God is living? It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to divide between spirit, soul, and body. Right. The intent of the heart of who we really are. Who do you think you are? I mean, yes, a child of God. Anything apart from that, you know, you're lost and you're undone. But when you get baptized, things can change. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. And the last one is in water, to be baptized in water. Now that talks about. You know, Jesus said to, to John the Baptist, it's to fulfill all righteousness. It's, it's, it's talking about being obedient to Christ. Water baptism is a, a public confession of something that has happened inwardly already. You've been baptized into Jesus. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Then the next step, you know, we, we want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, you don't have to be saved to have or have new life if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. But why wouldn't you want be That's baptized right. in the Holy Spirit That's right. with power, with yes. the supernatural. Of all that you may face in your lifetime, wouldn't you think that you would need some power? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, water baptism is a baptism into obedience. It's following after Jesus. It's publicly confessing to this congregation <laughs> that, that things have changed inside of you and that you're going on to maturity, that, 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 that you're you're giving your life to him, that there's there's a new resident, new things are taking place in your life. Hallelujah. Right. You know, in, in, in baptism, there's there's three baptisms that I'm gonna talk about, but in baptism, there's three things that you need. The first thing that, that you need in, in any of these baptisms. Is, is somebody to baptize you. Okay, you don't baptize yourself. How many know that you don't baptize yourself into Jesus? How many know that you don't baptize yourself into the Holy Spirit? How many know that you don't baptize yourself in water? That there needs to be somebody who baptizes us. Okay, so we're going to look into all three because the Holy Spirit is the one who baptizes us in Jesus. Amen. Yes. That that the Holy Spirit will 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 baptize us into Jesus, and then Jesus baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. And then, as far as water baptism, it can be a believer, it can be a pastor, it can be somebody who understands the scriptures of what's required. See, in in, in water baptism, what's what's required is for you to be a believer. Because there's three things. You need someone to baptize you, then you need a candidate. Okay? A, a person. And, and, and think about this now. If, if a person is baptized into Christ, into Jesus, it's, it's something that takes place inwardly. And the Holy Spirit is the one who does that. I've, I've got some scripture here. Let's, let's put that up there. For as many of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? Amen. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are what? Amen. Brand new. See, when you got born again, even Jesus talked about that in John chapter 3. If, if you read that, and I, I'm going to assign that to you. You read in, in, in the gospel of John chapter 3. Because Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Right. Now, what he was talking about, he, he was talking about the Holy Spirit causes us to be baptized, to cause our spirit to be reborn, renewed. That's a baptism into Christ. And that can happen anywhere. Right. Being baptized into Christ can happen in your car. Mm -hmm. 
It can happen at the grocery store. It can happen in your house. It can happen in your bedroom. That's right. I mean, wherever you may be, you hear the message and you believe. See, the Holy Spirit is here to help us. To help us. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. Amen. Not to take away from our life, but there has to be that being sensitive to what the Spirit of God is doing. And how many know that when you got saved? How many remember that day you got saved? I mean, I, I, I can see it vividly. Of being baptized into Christ about 3 o'clock in the morning at a kitchen table. I was baptized into Christ. I didn't know what. I knew something took place. I knew something had changed on the inside of me. I couldn't tell you what. But I knew something inwardly had taken place. I had believed on the Lord Jesus. And in that instant, my spirit became alive. I was baptized into Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, being baptized in the water, I, I said this already, that you need somebody to baptize you. Pastor... Tony and myself are going to baptize. I think we've got about eight or nine candidates that have that are believers that that they have said amen. See, with water baptism, it, it, it takes as you must believe with your whole heart that Jesus is the Christ. I mean, that's what the scripture says that we're going to look at in Acts. That that it. Remember uh, Philip? I'll just tell you the story, Philip. The Holy Spirit says, I want you to go next to this cherry. I want you to find this and in, in, in your, you're going to come in contact with this uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, eunuch. So he does what the Spirit of God says and, and, and this he's reading uh, from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 53. Anybody ever read Isaiah 53? He was led like a lamb to a slaughter and he opened not his mouth. You know, was talking about Jesus and and, and here he comes up and says, do you understand what you're reading? You know what? He didn't say, get away from me. Don't you know who I am? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in charge of the treasury with, I mean, the Queen Candace. So, so who, you know, who are you to come up next to me and start talking to me? How many know that he didn't do that? He was seeking after. He was wanting to know. And here this man shows up and he asks, do you understand what you're reading? He says, no, I don't. I don't know if it's talking about the prophet or somebody else. And it said from that very word, from that, he said he began to preach Jesus to him. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important for us to know Jesus so that we can preach to people that need Jesus. That's right. I never thought about that. I just thought you were going to do it all, Pastor. <laughs> no, he, he will use the body of Christ. He will use believers. So we have to know something about Jesus. And as he's going on, there he says, well, look, there's water right here. What, what stops me from being baptized in water? And he didn't say, well, you didn't go through my, you know, six class, you know, six month classes, you know, so you can't really, you know, you're, you're not qualified. I mean, no, he didn't say that. He, this is what he said. He said, if you can believe with your whole heart, you may. And out of his mouth, he says, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the son of the living God. See, that's what's required to be water baptized. You must be a believer. See, when you believe on the Lord Jesus and you ask him into your life, something happens. You may not even realize it's, it's in there. How many know that, that, that when a woman is, is pregnant, she, you know, she, she may not know right away, but there's a child inside of her. Right. Amen? Amen. And to understand, some, sometimes when we get born again, we may not even realize there's something... I'm alive unto God. My, my, my spirit has been born again. And I want to take it to the next level. Lord, what, what do you have for me? What is in, in this 
that is supernatural. I, Lord, I want what you want for me. And it's like to be born again. Jesus wants every person on the planet to be born again. Amen. He desires that. But every person has to make that decision for themselves. Whether they're going to believe on the Lord Jesus or not. Because some people will resist. I don't want that. I don't want what Jesus will bring into my life. I want to make my own choices. I want to live the way ever how I want to live. And how many know there's a lot of people doing that today? That's not a good place to be. You know, Jesus talks about he's the good shepherd. He says, my sheep hear my voice and they, they follow. And when you follow, you do obey. I want to follow Jesus from glory to glory to glory. Every new day is a new day. And learning to yield myself. Being baptized. The word baptism. Let's, let's put that up here because I want you to understand to be baptized, it means to be immersed. Okay? I mean, dunked. To sink. To be to go under. You know, it's, it's, it's an outward. Now what's the... Let's see. No, no, that's that's that, that, that's fine. I, I had something back. I'll, I'll, I'll just take it right here. It means to be submersion, to put under, to, to take a plunge. How many remember the Nest Tea Plunge commercial? I mean, that might be dating how old you are. But, I mean, they were engulfed. I mean, all of it surrounded. It, it wasn't just a little bit of dot. Let me just sprinkle a little bit. No, you're immersed. Under, totally, I mean submerged in something. And, in, in, you know, that new life, that nature of God to be submerged in, in that. I mean, I'm engulfed. I mean, it's new. This new life's on the inside of me. And then, you know, to have power. The Holy Spirit, you know, in Matthew, I think it's 3, 11. This is, he says, I indeed, this is John the Baptist, he says, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you. And what else? Fire. Power. Fire. I mean, the Holy Spirit. People want to cut out the book of Acts. They want to cut out of, of what Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit. And, and, and they just want, well, I just want, you know, certain teachings taught. No, Jesus talks about these three, I mean, the, the baptisms. One of the baptisms is being baptized in the Holy Spirit with power. I mean, when, when you receive power, that's what Jesus said in Acts 1. He said, I want you to wait in Jerusalem. Okay? Until the Holy Spirit comes, until you're baptized with the Holy Spirit. How many know that there was 120 up in that upper room? Did you know Jesus' mom was there? Mary was there? Mary got filled with the Holy Spirit. She was baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, when, when you think about what took place, they obeyed what Jesus said. They're up there. He said, not many days from now, you're going to receive power and you're going to be a witness for me. How many know to be a witness for Jesus, we need that power of the Holy Spirit. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You, you know, we need all these baptisms. Amen? Amen. And we don't need to just, well, I just want to, you know, Burger King, I want it my way. <laughs> Jesus commanded them, I want you to wait and receive power. And how many know in Acts chapter 2, they receive power. I'm, I'm going to read this. So let's put it up there. He said, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. 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 
a supernatural being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But there's other gifts that it talks about too. I mean, the speaking gifts, it, it talks about in the church that when the church service is going, there can be a tongue given in a service. Then there's an interpretation of that tongue. There may be prophecy that's given. How many know that's still for the church today? Amen. So you can't cut out the book of Acts or, or, or Corinthians and just say, well, you know what? I don't want any part of that because I'm not, I, I don't understand it. How are you ever going to understand the things of God if you don't come to God? That's right. I understand this. You can't believe something you've never heard, but once you hear it, don't shut it off. Oh, that's on there. I don't like that. I mean, that may be what you have need of to get you over, not under. Right. I mean, I, I believe that Jesus knows what he's talking about. If he commanded them, I want you to wait to receive, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because it's going to empower you to be a witness. How many know that if you read in Corinthians, it, it, it talks about this, it's as the Spirit wills, but it talks about uh, the power gifts. You know, faith. The supernatural. I mean, this is not your faith. This is the Holy Spirit faith working in you, with you. And then it talks about gifts of healings. Working of miracles. How many know the church needs that today? How many know that believers, that if you're filled with the Spirit of God, you never know in a given situation, the Spirit of God may use you to help reach somebody. To help somebody. See, Jesus is all about helping people. Right. See, giving the Holy Spirit will help us. The Bible says he's our helper. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And then it, it talks about revelation gifts. Discerning of spirits. Wouldn't it be nice to discern your situations? How about the word of knowledge? The word of wisdom that comes by the Spirit of God in any situation that you may face. How many of the Holy Spirit, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I mean, it empowers you. It helps you in your everyday living. So why wouldn't we want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? I mean, I can remember, Lord, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I, I saw Grandma and Mom was ba baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want that. And I was after it. It's like, Lord, why not me? And I was trying to figure it out in my head. Anybody ever, ever do that before? Just try to figure it out in your head. Well, I see it in the scripture. I know it to be so, but what, you know, Lord, what am I? I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not sure how, how to do this. You know, does, does the spirit of God just take over me? But as I begin to seek and, 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 and ask and knock and, 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 and press in and, and I realize it's that my spirit begins to pray. And it has to come through my flesh. It's, it's got to come out of my mouth. And I can remember just, I got off the midnight shift. Anybody ever worked uh, and, and, and got home and made something to eat? And I just laid down in the bed. And, and I was just thanking the Lord for what he was doing in my life. Amen. Anybody ever just be grateful? I mean, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing in my life. I'm, you know, you, you have changed me. You've brought me out of, of darkness, and now I'm in, in, in the kingdom of God. I am so thankful. And I was just praising him, and I was singing to the Lord. Anybody just love to sing to the Lord? I mean, I was just singing to the Lord and worshiping him and just having a good time after getting off work. And, and just my body was tired, but my spirit was like alive. And I just begin to thank him. And I could remember those old type wells that you pump. And, I mean, you can feel the water coming up. I could feel something coming up on the inside of me. And I begin to sing in the spirit. Oh, and I sang. And I kept singing to the Lord in an unknown tongue. Worshiping him, praising him, glorifying him. And just the presence of of God and the, and the joy of the Lord, the tears of joy, just, I mean, to experience that. I was like, yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. 
And it was real. It wasn't something conjured up. It was me pressing in. It was me seeking. Because I had gone, I, I had many anointed preachers and teachers lay hands on me because the Bible talks about you can receive the Spirit of God through the laying on of hands. So I had gone up and I had big time ministers lay hands on me, but nothing. <laughs> and it wasn't their fault, it was me getting in the way. But once I got out of the way and I let God just work in me. I wasn't trying to figure it out in my head. I just began to just allow the Spirit of God in me. Jesus baptized me in the Holy Spirit with power. And I still desire spiritual gifts. The Bible says to desire spiritual gifts. It talks about being refilled with the Spirit of God. So there's still that pressing in and allowing God to be God in us. Amen? Amen. All right. Yes, I said I had this object lesson. I didn't forget about it. This here represents man. In sin. In darkness. It says that we've all have sinned. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. I knew that when I received Jesus... I knew I was a sinner. I knew my life wasn't good. I, I, I know I needed something. And you know what? There when I was still in high school, I was a senior in high school. We, we had a bunch of us just inquire about spiritual things. Wanting to know about some things. We had a a, a uh, minister, of, I'm, I'm not going to say the denomination, but come to somebody's house and there's like 30 of us asking questions and he had no clue. I mean, he was glad to be there, but, but he couldn't preach Jesus to any of us with the questions that we had. But, but they made us, me and my buddy, a, a, a youth minister. And, and we didn't know anything. <laughs> I mean, we were still, I mean, we went through the classes and stuff, but we were still very much in this lifestyle. We were still doing things in darkness. Because this is what, see, people think by joining a church or getting into a religion, and they, they get into it, they think something's going to happen. This is what happens. It's just wet. <laughs> I mean, you hear the water dripping. It's just wet. Did it change? See, my life didn't change. See, but but when I found Jesus, see, just being, just going through the rituals of a church, no. if <laughs> it won't save you, it won't change you. Just being baptized into religion, just. Attending a church won't save you. But see, my mom led me to Jesus. Amen. Three o'clock in the morning, you've all heard it. I was intoxicated. I don't know how I got home. But mom was sitting at the table reading her Bible. And I sat down. I said, Mom, what's wrong with me? I just, I, I, I don't like myself. It's like I'm Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. And what's, what's wrong with me? And she, she reached across the table and she grabbed my hand and she looked me in the eye and she said, Son, you need Jesus. Well, I've tried everything else, Mom. I, 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 I think I'll... What, what do I need to do? And, and she led me in a simple prayer. She, she helped me to understand, which I knew I was a sinner, but I needed to repent of my sins. And I asked Jesus into my heart that morning, intoxicated. <laughs> and Jesus met me right where I was at. That's right. And I came out like this. Amen. 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 I knew 
something had taken place. I was baptized into Christ and I became new. And that old had passed away and there was a new man in me now. There was a new life in me. Amen. There had been a change in my life right. that instantly. And you might say, well, I'm just going to ring this out a little bit. <laughs> Because I want you to understand that Jesus wants to change your life. By believing on the Lord Jesus, you can become a new creation. Amen. It says that in 2 Corinthians. If any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creation. See, the minute that you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is what takes place. A change takes place. Amen. Now, with this, being baptized into Christ, that's what's required for water baptism. To be baptized in water that we're going to do today. Now, I, I said it's to fulfill all righteousness. And you might say, well, is there any power to the water baptism? Yes. It's, it's, it's a going on to perfection. It's going on to maturity. You know, that's, that's what Jesus wants us to do is be obedient to the heavenly vision. So being water baptized, it is saying, publicly confessing to people today that there's been a change because you've been baptized into Christ. Now you want to be baptized in water. And really, it's a baptism to obedience. How many here you want to obey Jesus? Amen. Come on, you want to follow Jesus. It's to fulfill all righteousness. It's the next step. Okay? How many know that being baptized in the Holy Spirit, Jesus wants you baptized in the Holy Spirit? I mean, if he commanded them to wait to receive the Holy Spirit, don't you think that he would ask the church today to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Amen. So you can't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. You can't be afraid to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. If somebody says, well, that's of the devil... I'm, I'm going to just tell you right now, that's what the devil uses to try to stop you. I don't understand it. Well, there's a lot of things in the world today that you don't understand. <laughs> Isn't that right? That's right. You know, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. Come on, it's in that process of being, you know, Lord, I want what you have for me. How many have ever read the story in Acts with Cornelius? He's an Italian uh, army guy. He's a Gentile. And, and he's devout. I mean, he, he prays every day. He gives alms to the people in need. I mean, generously. He has a heart after God. But he's not a Jew. And Peter has a problem with that. And, and, and Cornelius is praying and he has this encounter and he says, you know, I want you to send for Peter. He's in Joppa to come and bring, bring him here to speak to you. How many know Cornelius does just that? He, he sends people to go get Peter and, and Peter's up on the rooftop and he's in a trance and he sees this sheep coming down out of heaven with all kinds of animals and all kinds of things. And, and, and God says, eat. And you know what Peter says? Never. Never will I do that. And then God says, don't call what's holy that I've made holy. He had to do it three times. I don't know, there's something about three times with Peter. <laughs> But he finally got it, you know, as he, he, he decides, I'm going to go because I see now that God is no respecter of person. Whatever person throughout the world that reverence God, that fears God, that God will bless. Right. Amen. Amen. God will pour out. So it's not, it's not whether you're a Gentile or a Jew, slave or free. It's the new creation. It's about what Jesus has done. So he gets that revelation. So he comes to Cornelius' house. Cornelius brings his whole relatives, his whole family, his close friends. They're packed into this place. So Peter's preaching to them about Jesus. 
And as he's doing this, they all were filled with the Spirit of God and begin to speak in other tongues. Yeah. Hallelujah. I mean, they were astonished. They were amazed. These are Gentile people. What is God doing? See, God loves every nation. Do you, do you understand that God loves people? People are created in his image. He wants all men to be saved. And we see this taking place, and they're filled with the Spirit of God, and they're speaking with other tongues. And, and in Acts, i got to find it here for you. Acts chapter, where is it at? 1047. Acts 1047. Now, the Spirit of God, they're, they're baptized. Now, the requirement to be baptized into Christ is that you must believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen? Okay, so what's required for a person to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? To be a believer. Okay, if you're a believer, then you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, to be baptized in water, who's... Who's the candidate for that? A believer. A believer. So you look at this. The first thing that God wants you to become a believer. He wants you to be baptized into Christ. Everything become brand new. The next step. I mean, he wants you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit with power. Here these people were, were seeking after God. They were believers. They believed. And as Peter began to come and he began to preach, the Spirit of God filled that place. And then he goes on to say, here he, he says, Can anyone forbid water that those should not be baptized who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? How many know that they were baptized in water? I remember the story with the 3,000 people that got saved. They were baptized. And it says that they continued. They continued. They continued with the apostles and the, hearing the teachings. And how many know that when you get water baptized is not the end? It's not just come to get water baptized. Well, I've been baptized for heaven. It's a baptism into obedience and following after Jesus. Because there's things that Jesus wants to do in your life to help people. Anybody here want to help people? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What's required for, for water baptism? You must believe that Jesus is the Christ. Amen? Amen. That's, that's, what, that's what Philip told this uh, eunuch. If you can believe with your whole heart, you may. So we're going to do the water baptism at this time. Now, did, did you learn something this morning? Yeah. You know, how many know that Jesus wants you to be baptized? into him. He wants you to be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and he wants you to be baptized in water. I mean, let's go on to perfection. Let's go on to maturity. You know, this may be the first time that you're hearing something like that today. But see, you have to be the one. How many know that when you stand before Jesus, listen to me, when you stand before Jesus, you're going to give an account to your life. And it really boils down to what you believe. Because what you believe is what you become. How I many know that we don't want to resist the Holy Spirit? That's right. We, we don't want to just have a form of godliness, but we, we resist the power. We need the power of the Spirit in our life. I mean, more than anything. I mean, there's times that I can just pray in the Spirit. I'm praying a perfect prayer. God knows what I'm saying. And it's building up my spirit, man. It's strengthened me for the days that what, whatever lies ahead. So that I can have victory in my life, but also in my family's life, in this church's life, in this community, in the surrounding communities. So that it can have life. Because Jesus talked about there would be rivers of living water flowing out of us. Out of the church. You are the church. 
It's more than just joining a church. We are the called out ones. God is working in us and through us to do of his good pleasure. 